Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for a brand new matchup in Let's Learn StarCraft. Today, not only are we going to talk about Zerg vs. Terran core strategy, but also your host will be me, Day9 slowly transforming into Wolverine. Let's take a drink of delicious water. Mm. Mm. And yes, it is a portal mug that you can see through. Oh my god, that's so stylish. And I want to begin, before we even go into any of the details and specifics of this matchup, by noting that Zerg vs. Terran is really weird. I began with Terran vs. Protoss strategy due to the fact that Terran starts making Vulture Tank and keeps doing that all game long. Protoss starts making Zealot Dragoon and keeps making that all game long. And you can think about the relationship between those four units as defining the entire skeleton of that matchup. Zerg vs. Terran is very weird due to the fact that, one, it's super easy to lose at almost any point. Two, there are many possible units that can show up in the matchup, making it unclear what the patterns are. And three, there are different overall archetypes that live in the matchup. For instance, Terran can go for a bio-focused play and can go for a mech-focused play. And this results in a whole lot of potential confusion of potential weirdness. But have no fear, I have spent the entire week preparing for you a suite of informative videos, slides, and of course replay selections to highlight everything that we need to know about this particular matchup. So I want to start off by noting the two big ideas that exist strategically in all of StarCraft. One, StarCraft is about getting more money. Mo money, less problems, okay? Um, but once again, because it's so easy to lose as Terran and as Zerg, you might think it's about getting big timing pushes or trying to win uh, with a really huge attack at some point or by exploiting some weakness in your opponent's defenses or something like that. And that's all good. But after 20 years of StarCraft, Zerg versus Terran is still a matchup about getting more money. And the second thing, second core idea of Zerg vs. Terran matchup is that it's strong armies versus mobile armies. Strong armies tend to be immobile. Lurkers that can't move all burrowed. Dark Swarm that cannot move once it's cast. Tanks that once they're sieged they can't move. Mines that once they're burrowed don't move at all. Um, those strong power value units are in contrast with the very mobile units. And in this matchup that would be Lings and Mutalisks and uh, the Bio for Terran. So... The thing that's especially weird in Zerg vs. Terran is that Zerg has some very sturdy, strong pieces, like Lurkers and Defilers, but also some very mobile pieces, and that's sort of weird to have a mixture of those two in the matchup. But once again, I want you to think about these because these are going to uh, persist throughout all of our analysis. There was another big idea that if I can go to the next slide, I'd be thrilled to show you. Excellent. That these are the rough stages of a game. That in the early game, it's about sort of making a play and defending a base. And in the mid game, you start to see core armies develop. Doesn't matter what weird nonsense you did, you have to start making something that can fight head on once you get to the mid game. And this is where we might see more uh, pressure from both sides. But again, a big goal of the mid game is to take a base. And in the late game, there's what I call matured core armies, multi-pronged tactics and taking many bases. This is the rough outline of the game. But we're going to, whoa, we're going to hit all the wrong buttons. By the way, StarCraft is made by Blizzard Entertainment. I don't know how the hell I always accidentally hit that slide, but whatever. Uh, oh my god, this is the wrong slide too. There we go, now I'm back. <laughs> I've, I've taken that idea of the early, mid, and late game, and I, I'm breaking it down with a little bit more granularity for the Zerg vs. Terran matchup, where I'm going to say that the early game is really about Zerg and Terran expanding and building up. Zerg has the advantage for some of the early game. Once speed Zerglings come out, Marines can't do shit. They can't do anything once those speed Zerglings are up. But it's very easy to die to a bunker rush, for instance, early on if you're Zerg. But then there's this second phase that um, occasionally I'll refer to as mid-game one. And then you'll see uh, uh, element three here says mid-game. That's often mid-game two. But I like to think of this second stage as the late early game. Where Terran is trying to do everything that he can with marines and medics and maybe some other units in there, but generally not. 
Terran's trying to do everything he can to delay a third, while Zerg is trying to take a third. Zerg's trying to harass with mutas, harass with links, trying to delay with lurkers, just to get to phase three. And phase three of Zerg vs. Terran is really the defining um, start to the really cool, interesting aspects of Zerg vs. Terran, where Zerg has three bases and defilers, Terran is going crazy with biopressure, maybe making a big transition, taking lots of bases themselves. And in stage four is the late game, where everyone's harassing and attacking in all sorts of different angles and different tactics that we're going to see later in this episode. But there's a really critical piece to understand here, which is that Terran has the choice to go SK Terran, which is mass bio and science vessel, or has the choice to go for lots of factories to make tanks and vultures, again backed by vessels. And Terran is the one who's dictating this. Terran is the one who's setting the pace for the game. Zerg must be responding to what the Terran player is doing. And this is often something that is critical to understanding strategy. For instance, um, Protoss players against Zerg can go Zealot, High Templar, Archon with Dragoon. They can also go Dragoon Reaver. Protoss has the choice, and Zerg has to recognize and respond to that. Um, in this matchup, Zerg is the responder. Terran is the one setting the pace. Very, very, very rarely do we actually see Zerg doing something weird of his own volition. Um, so, versus looking at all of these four stages right here, I want to, again, emphasize how weird this matchup is. If you're struggling as Zerg or struggling as Terran, that makes total sense. I completely, totally understand. Because in the early game, it's easy to get bunker rushed and die as Zerg. It's easy to have Zergling stream in and kill you as Terran. In this late early game stage, it's easy as Terran to lose all your bio. It's easy as Zerg to never get a third. This phase three, it's easy to begin misallocating defilers, misallocating lurkers, and leaving weakness in some area. And as Terran, I don't need to explain to Terran players how much it's enraging to play against defilers. And then, of course, there's so much tactics that exist in the late game, and so much possibility for Terran to go both bio or mech that it can be a little confusing. But don't worry, we're going to break it down. And I want to start by talking about the late game. I think it's such an important concept if you're working in any strategy game, not to say, what is my next step now? I'm at, I'm at step two, what's step three? But you want to know what step 10 is, because then no matter where you meander, you know what you're trying to arrive to. And you heard me talk about the different types of end games that Terran can go for. Here's one of them. This is called the SK Terran style. I, I don't know why. I think there was someone named SK that popularized it. But you see that there are lots of barracks making marines. Two engineering bays upgrading those marines. Two starports making science vessels to support those marines. And then a factory for tanks. Very often you will see double starport, single factory. It's very rare nowadays to see extra factories. Um, the goal of this is to be very mobile and to hit different locations all over the map to be able to see, um, uh, you know, to hit weakness like these lurkers that are hanging out, to use the science vessels to irradiate defilers, to detect lurkers, to irradiate lurkers, to irradiate ultralisks. The other one is the mech late game. It does not matter if you open mech. You can open bio and transition into mech, which is actually uh, the most popular style at super high level Terran vs. Zerg, where you're going lots of factories to try to do things like build tons of tanks and place mines, all while mass expanding. Um, and the, these play out very differently, but these are the two big, big, big end game styles that you'll wind up seeing. However, now that we have those in our mind, I want to take one step back from the late game and I want to get to the mid game because this is where a lot of our conversation is going to be uh, um, uh, framed from today. Understanding that no matter how games open, no matter what weirdness happens, things tend to arrive at the same mid game. And what I want to do is, first of all, double check to make sure I didn't forget a slide. I didn't. Hot damn. I'm so good. I want to show you the mid game for Zerg and Terran broken up into two parts. You heard me initially describe that there's really um, two mid games. There's this late early mid game 
and then there's the proper mid game. I want to take a look at each of those individually. This is the late early game, right? This is not very deep into the game. Like you see, it's only seven minutes. There's not a lot of tech. This is a game that I showed a little earlier in the Let's Learn StarCraft series. This is Innovation, the StarCraft II All-Star versus Jadong, the StarCraft One and Two All-Star. And let's take a look at what the, the late early game looks like for Zerg. One, two, three hatcheries. Three hatcheries is a critical number. If you don't have three hatcheries, you simply don't have enough larva to make the units that you need. But there's a spire right here because mutalisks are very good both at harassing Terran, which again, delay, 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 delay to try to get to defilers. But also they're quite good defensively. Um, there's also a beginning tech towards lurkers, another essential defensive unit. And Zerg's trying to take a third base. And how is Zerg able to do this? He's using all of these mutalisks to try to harass like crazy. What's the Terran mid game? Or excuse me, what's the Terran late early game? What's the first convergence point for Terran? Well, two bases, as you can see on this mini map here, but there's an engineering bay in order to build missile turrets and get upgrades for that bio. There's all of these Marines here that are uh, upgraded at the Academy, both STEM and the range upgrade gets Research in essentially 100% of matchups. There's three barracks here. We'll take a look at some variation in a little bit, but for the most part, it's Marines, upgrade, defense. Marines, upgrade, defense. That is late early game for Zerg and Terran. And if we take a look at the mid game, this is that third element that you saw in that list of this matchup. What does this look like? Zerg has defilers and is getting two evolution chambers of upgrades. In the main base, an additional hatchery is constructed and we see defilers, Zerglings, and those lurker eggs there being morphed. Scourge are arriving to deal with science vessels. Nidus networks connect to our third base. We're in total defense mode, and because we're in total defense mode as Zerg, sometimes we can even take a fourth expansion, as you see laid out right here. This is the way that the normal matchup looks. And on the Terran side of things, again, it tends to be driving hard into one of those two possibilities. Here's an expansion getting started. Uh-oh, it's SK Terran style. We've seen this one before. Lots of barracks, some starports, a single factory. And the two bases still running strong with some options to do other things. But primarily, what are we doing with our units? We're pushing out into the middle of the map. We're maybe considering doing some drop style plays. Nice. So far, so good. Let's take a look at another late early game. This is a completely different game. But what we're trying to highlight is the idea of convergence points so that no matter how the hell the game's opened, we see similarities as to what we're hitting. I actually feel like there's this big optical illusion with strategy games that in chess, if you do move A first, there's all the branches for move A. Or if you did B as your first move, there's all the branches for B. But if you moved your knight and then your bishop versus your bishop and then your knight, it's really nice and clarifying to see that you hit the same position despite permuting those two moves. And this is what we're looking at here. In this opening, there was actually some uh, aggression from Flash early on, playing against uh, Wung Jin Star's hero. Wung Jin Star's is now a disbanded pro team, but uh, Zero, the Zerg player here, is an exceptional Zerg, and we'll see one of his games versus Flash, maybe two of his games, depending on time, versus Flash later on today. But once again, here's our first convergence point, what I call the late early game. This map is a little different, so there's going to be some slight variations. In this map, you have a very easily accessible extra base up here, but we still see mutalisks. One, two, three hatches. Well, we actually have an extra hatch early on. We have four hatches, but we still see zerglings with speed. Mutalists coming out in order to harass. What similarities do we see out of Flash? Well, Flash, we see, still has these three barracks. He still has two bases. He still has the engineering bay getting upgrades. We see a factory and a starport down. Would we say that this late early game is different than the last game that we looked at? No. We would say that Flash is doing the same as Innovation, except that here we see Flash is a little bit faster getting his factory in a starport. It's the same, but accelerated. I don't want you to think of it as different. 
And in the sim uh, similar vein, Zero is not doing something different. He's doing a slightly um, tuned to this map version where he has one extra hatchery because he could afford this early base. Ah, delicious. And I think this video goes on for a while longer. I have no idea why. Why does this video go on longer? Oh, I remember. Because, as is very common in the late early game, we usually see there is a lot of bio out for Terran. Here's the bio. And one thing that we note is missing for Zerg is his third base. Not missing as in Zerg has made an error, but rather Zerg really wants to get up that third base. Let's take a look at how this game evolved into the mid, because this game took a crazy, crazy turn. Just appreciate the minimap. We see this long string of red Zerg and a purple Terran base, and we see this purple uh, Terran army moving up to this Zerg third. <laughs> This game got crazy. You heard me say that Zerg vs. Terran's a really weird, difficult to understand matchup. This is the sort of game that can be confusing on initial analysis, but if we just pause, ignore the intensity of the moment, we see the similar elements to the Innovation Jadong match. We see a Defiler mount. We see um, upgrades coming out of an Evolution Chamber. We also see an additional hatchery getting built in the main base. There it is right there. Boom. We see the third base up for Zerg. He needs to send those drones into the gas geyser. And yeah, there's some Terran craziness happening, but yeah, the Terran player has gotten attacked here. We see a lot of buildings burning down. And often when a player gets attacked in any matchup, it's easy to get, again, thrown down this false idea that I am in unique situation X and therefore I must play it out in a way I may have never thought about before. Absolutely not. Flash, if we look at this, he still has three barracks, a factory making tanks, a starport making science vessels. He has two base, he's lost a lot of SCVs. If we asked ourselves, what's the next step for Flash? Probably building two more barracks, building another engineering bay as to get upgrades, trying to get back to that same mid-game look that we saw out of innovation in that very first game. <laughs> Sometimes, see, this is, this is an insane game. The insane game, I hope we'll even have time to look at this game today. Uh, I don't think we will. I have a lot of material I want to cover, but... Oh yeah, I also wanted to show the brief end of this game. You heard me say this matchup's very easy to lose. Sometimes when you're Terran, you're just trying to have a nice life. You're trying to just do your thing, and you don't set up defensive properly. You get lurkers in your main base. Yeah, Terran is killing off your expansion, but... <laughs> you're killing off everything he has. You're burrowing on top of his barracks. Very easy matchup for crazy weird things to have happen. Um, it, just in terms of tactics, not in terms of strategy. Both players, you'll note at the start of this video, strategy-wise, oops, strategy-wise, they still are doing the normal looking things. Strategy-wise, it's still a convergent mid-game. It's just that tactics-wise, things get a little weird. One last example that we're going to take a look at of this late early game and mid game. This is Shine versus Flash. We analyzed the series a little bit ago. We see Mutalisks, three hatches in the main, sunken colonies to defend, a drone heading to take a third base. We see this structure in the main base for Shine. This is the Hydralisk den getting built. And what do we see over on Flash's side? Notice how similar this looks to Innovation in the very first video we looked at. There's Missile turrets and engineering bay getting upgrades, but there's five barracks instead of three. This is a uh, a style that's become very uh, popular nowadays, the five racks plus one uh, upgrade opening. And what do we think are the qualities of this? Well, 
We already know that there's the mid-game goal for Terran, which is to get the factory to make tanks, to get the starport to make science vessels, and to begin to expand and really flesh out the rest of our style. What would we say that this strategy would do relative to others? It would delay the mid-game, because we're getting five barracks instead of three, but we're hoping to really pressure even more. Um, I'm going to come back and just re-emphasize the slide before we wind up looking at too many more videos. I want to re-emphasize the broad strokes here where there is some buildup that happens at the start of Zerg vs. Terrans, typically with the Zerg taking three hatches, including an expansion, and Terran trying to establish his expansion. This late early game, no matter how kooky and crazy the opening is, late early game is a lot of marine medic trying to deny a third while Zerg tries to take a third. This mid game is Zerg on Defiler Lurker with supporting units and Terran having quite a lot of bioscience vessels and tanks. Okay, this is the game. This is how Zerg versus Terran looks. This is the shape of it, or as I like to call the skeleton of it. There's a really fundamental thing going on there that I think is completely reasonable to ask, which is why does the matchup look this way? Why is it lings and mutas to start and then lurkers and then defilers and then all sorts of possibility for Zerg? Why is it for Terran bio and then uh, science vessels and tanks and then possibly mass mech and then possibly mass SK? What, what's going on? Why is that the case? Why not hydras? Why not goliaths? Why not vultures? Why not start off going mass tanks? Well, it all comes down to one simple thing. Marines are ridiculously, stupidly, out of control strong, okay? This is the same game that we saw between Flash and Shine. This is a really common occurrence. Shine is still in stage two, the late early game. Shine, look at him, he's using his mutilus, he's picking off Marines against Flash. He's got his third base done, he's gonna turn those Hydras into Lurkers, yeah! He's got some defenses at the front, but Marines are really good. Any mistake you make. And then I decided to add some commentary, there's an unhappy face, Marines OP. And Marines OP is a fun, funny thing to say. But in all truth, Marines are, I, I strongly believe, the weirdest unit in Brood War. They're the weirdest unit in all of Brood War. Marines destroy everything. Every unit dies really badly to Marines. But under the right condition, Marines lose horrifically to almost every unit in the game. Ugh. Oh. And it's really rough. I want to now, in my effort to work backwards, I want to come all the way back to the early game. I want to come all the way back to the early game because you've seen me show this. Early game, middle, late has these qualities. We've talked about the different possible late games uh, where there's the big mech or the SK Terran. We've talked a little bit about the phases in the late early game and the mid game of this pressure and the taking the third. Let's start from the beginning and begin to rebuild our understanding up into this. And then after we get a really thorough understanding of how all the units function in this matchup, we're going to look at some example games to really solidify our understanding of the matchup, at least at a intuitive level. Here we go. Let's start off with Marines versus Zerglings. We have some unupgraded Zerglings. We have some unupgraded Marines. These are the first two units that exist in... Um, uh, for each of these players. Let's take a look at how 48 Zerglings fare against 24 Marines with Stim and four Medics. In this video, I attack straight on. Hardly anything gets lost for the Terran player. But, as you heard me say before, Marines are one of the weirdest units that have ever existed. Take a look at all of these Zerglings. Again, four control groups, 48 Zerglings, coming in from four sides. Here's one, here's two, here's three, and four is below. And you see on the minimap, they are perfectly surrounding. Once again, Stim for the Terran player. 
I rearranged these zerglings just to get slightly better surface area, but other than that, it's really about the pre-positioning. Zerglings can demolish marines at good angles, but let's not forget the most important thing in this entire series of clips, the last two, marines didn't really move. Often marines will retreat and rearrange themselves to be at an angle such that all the zerglings are effectively coming from one side. So that way, the result can be similar to this first video clip. Okay, well I have a question. What about hydralisks? How do hydralisks fare against marines? Here, I have 12 hydras in one control group, 12 hydras in another, and this is 24 marines. Uh, maybe it's 30 marines. Uh, is it 6 and 6 and 6 and 6? Yeah, this is 30 marines. So. This is trying to have about the same cost of units because it's two control groups of hydralisks. That's 24 hydras at 75 minerals each. And this is 30 marines at 50 minerals each. Let's see how hydras fare with just four medics. Neither of us are doing extreme micro, but hydras just get bear mauled by marines. There's relatively few circumstances in which hydralisks succeed at all against marines. What about mutalisks? Well, here's 10 mutalisks. I'm feeling all fancy and cool, but if I attack these marines head on, I die not just badly, but like, like the Terran is fist pumpingly thrilled and excited. <laughs> to have participated in that fight. Woo! Hell yeah! To deal with Marines, we need to be a little bit more clever. We need to do things like micro our mutalisks. Why do we see so many mutalisks in the late early game against Terran? Well, first of all, first of all, mutalisks can harass. I haven't shown mutalisks picking off SCVs. Mutalists can pick off SCVs. I know you can wrap your head around the concept of mutalists killing workers. This is the far more important use of mutalists, which is trying to find an isolated Marine here or there and just pick it off. All these Marines stimmed, I'm just falling back. I try to get an angle to pick off a few here. Managed to get two. Got another two while he was retreating. and. There's a moment where you might think, hey, I've picked off, it looks like one, two, three, four, five-ish, five, six marines for free. I've only taken a little bit of damage on my mutalisks. Time to charge in and kill off the marines. And in many circumstances, this can work. But you have to be super careful because even though I managed to kill off almost everything, just a few marines being healed by medics annihilates mutalisks. I don't know if you saw this in the first attack through of this engagement, but I want you to watch virtually all the marines die immediately until we get to here. I have seven mutalisks. There's one, two, three, four marines. That's it. These four marines don't die. Watch one, two, three, four marines. Four Marines. Now, obviously I didn't micro. Obviously you can do wonders if you're able to do smart target positioning here or get a Terran while he's retreating as I do right here and then hit hold position at just the right time to maximize the range. If you do those sorts of things, those are super duper ultra positive for picking off of the Marines. But in terms of straight up engagements, you have to be very careful that you are continuing to micro as much as you can here. And we'll see some of that when we look at some of the uh, Zerg vs. Terran games in part two of today's episode. So let me just start by saying Marines in the early game are the deformers of all strategy. No matter what you do, you gotta say, how do I not immediately die? to a shitload of Marines. 
And by immediately, I mean that, like, as literally as I can mean it. Like, you immediately die to a ton of Marines. And really smart Terran players will take advantage of this by just sniffing out weakness. This is two medics, 12 Marines with stim, and the Marines do not have range. These two sunken colonies are the only defenses that I have right now. And the Terran player is going to run up into this box and then target click attack. By the way, Terran players, if you're doing this, don't 1A. Stim, walk everything close, and then shoot, as Trask does here. Look at him stim up, and now he shoots. Look at how fast that sunken colony falls. Boom! One down, two down. And this is a dead expansion. And then I had to beg Trask not to kill me. Please, Trask, please no. Oh. Marines are very strong in the early game. And in fact, even in mid and late game, they're very, 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 very strong. So much so that Zerg has to rely on Mutilus to micro, Zerglings getting really good angles, and of course, the Lurker. Oh god, guys, the Lurker. Oh, the Lurker. Oh no, this is the wrong video. Oh no, I renamed the long thi wrong thing. Oh shit. Okay, here's the right video. Lurkers. This is two Lurkers. Next to an expansion, the Lurker, the Lurker, the Lurker, the Lurker, the Lurker, the Lurker. This is 24 Marines and 4 Medics trying to kill my Lurkers. Oh, look at him die! Isn't that wonderful? Oh, isn't that fantastic? Yeah! Woo! I'm the fucking best! I told Trace to attack into it and he's like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah! Lurkers seem like a really natural way to fight against bio in the early game. In fact, if we take this this question, well, if lurkers worked great in defense, why don't we just attack with them? Sometimes you will have results such as this, where we send in the zerglings from all sides, and we just we just rip everything to shreds. We hardly we lost most of our zerglings, but. All of our lurkers stayed alive. Yeah. Um, the problem, though, is that you can, as the Terran, simply disengage. I have the same mixture. I have, I think it's six lurkers, 24 zerglings. And I'm going to be up against 24 marines and four medics. I burrow those lurkers slightly late. Terran loses a little bit. I didn't need to lose these Zerglings. Let me actually come back to right here. At this point, Terran's lost just a, a smattering of his Marines, nothing super significant. However, I've lost most of my Zerglings. I've lost most of those Zerglings there. So, it's very difficult for me to try to do any sort of follow-up engagement. Also, if your Terran player miscontrols, then hell yeah, nice. But there's this phrase that you heard me use in the Zerg unit analysis um, way back, I think it was maybe episode 4 or something of Let's Learn StarCraft. Lurkers are not really an attacking unit, primarily because your opponent can just walk away from it. They're amazing defensively, such as this example with the Marines fighting against the Lurkers at the top of the ramp. But Lurkers are not really a super effective offensive unit. And what I need to return to, yet again, is this slide. Where we're starting to really understand why, in this late early game, why Terran can be so effective against um, the Zerg in the mid game. Because Zerg really can't ever attack into that marine medic force efficiently in head-on engagements. The only way that Zerg can do anything in this element 2 here in the late early game is with Mutalist Micro, overwhelming Zergling numbers, and it's very hard to get high Zergling numbers against Bio because if you're building Zerglings, you're not building drones. You're not doing anything to further your progress in the game. And three, Lurkers are just not that effective at attacking. So it's really just the micro large zergling numbers and trying to hope to get lurkers in good defensive positions. Um, there's one more video that I think will will maybe hurt you, will hurt you a lot, which is medic marine are still pretty damn good against lurkers if the positioning is not good. 
if the positioning is not good. Here's a great micro trick. Um, it, it's super easy to do. What Trace is going to do is he's going to take this marine stim and send it right past the lurkers. These lurkers will fire at it and the rest of the bio will clean up. Watch how fast this happens. See? Taking no damage. I even right click to try to target fire. Doesn't matter. Lurkers die fast. They have a little teensy bit more health than a mutilisk. Just a smidge more. Um... So they die as fast as Mutalisks. Bio is insanely good in the early game. So Terran can easily pressure with this to try to deny the third base. Now, what I've done is I've sort of explained what the context is for this, for this slide. I've sort of explained why Terran can pressure and deny. I've explained why Zerg is desperate and struggles to get the third. But what about some of the other units? What about something beyond this? What about, say, the siege tank? And the siege tank is um, a very reasonable unit to use to break um, Zerg Lurker positioning. Typically, what winds up happening in, um, I should say, if you, if you go back to sort of the late 2000s, 2007, 8, 9, even all the way up to like 2011, 2012 in StarCraft's history, Zerg was much slower at getting defilers. Nowadays, Zerg tend to rush for defilers almost seemingly recklessly quickly. In this 2007 to 2012 period, and you'll still even see this happen today, it's not as sturdy as the defiler. It can be a little bit less reliable, but it's still very effective. Instead of rushing to defiler for defense, you burrow lurkers pretty far forward and you try to do retreating with them. So um, let's see here. You'll see something like this. You'll see the siege tanks come out in support of the bio since if the lurker numbers get high enough, bio will lose to it. But in this example, we have some lurkers. Zerg has three control groups and siege tanks are used to shoot picking off one, and Zerg goes, oh my god, whoop, let me back up. At which point, Terran begins to move forward again. What's happening back home for Zerg during this entire time? While Zerg's just trying to delay, he's getting defilers. He's, this is the time buyer. The third is getting established behind this. The hive is getting established behind this. This is really nice. And with all these lurkers and all these Zerglings, I, the Zerg, can go, wait a minute, wait a minute, our Terran buddy accidentally messed up and lost a tank and lost a few Marines. You know what? I'm going in. And we see many mid-games in this matchup look a little bit like this. Got him. Well, actually, I didn't quite get him, but that's fine. I still killed off the tanks. And then he throws his army away, because <laughs> this is an example. But you have to be a little careful uh, in this spot. Part of the reason why this fell out of style is because if you mess this up at all, you can lose the game immediately as Zerg. So we've understood, once again, that Bio is the, the strategy-deforming unit. It's the thing that can just instantly kill you if you mess up at all. Lurkers are good at holding that off, and now we have the tanks supporting these this Bio. Lurkers are trying to unburrow. I'm trying to reburrow them. I'm playing the Zerg pieces in this particular match. And then I think, oh my god, you know what? Okay, no, that's not a good time. Let me back up. Oof. If I had unburrowed just a second earlier, I'd have been able to stay alive. Darn. All right, I still got my Zerglings nice and spread out. And I think, okay, he's he's unsieged. I'm going in. Uh-oh, he actually did siege up at a pretty good time. And in this case, I accidentally miss micro a little bit. And by that, I mean I didn't have some of the Zerglings attack, just to show you how badly this can go for Zerg. And suddenly, I'm the Zerg player, and I've lost everything. This is a little bit of the reason why often Terran players will uh, pressure without that many tanks 
and why the Zerg, or I should say, this is why the Terrans will pressure some with tanks, and why the Zerg has been relying less on mass lurker styles as of late, and instead more so been pushing towards defilers, because if you screw up your micro a little bit, this can be an outcome. And I think that this is um, most of the time what happens, I'd say probably 50 or 60% of the time, something like this example, where if the tanks show up, and they are in support of um, this bio. And then I, the Zerg, go, whoops, those tanks are far forward and isolated. I'll burrow the lurkers to get just the tanks. And then here, Terran can just disengage, and it winds up being a neutral exchange. This is pretty common in the mid game. Okay, so I'm going to come back to our glorious uh, photo of our broad strokes of ZVT. Mid-game, de Zerg defends three base with Defiler, Terran pressures and expands. And what are those common Terran units you heard me talk about in the mid-game? What, what do those look like? Well, let me go to this uh, mid-1 look and kind of cut to the Terran side of things. It's a lot of science vessels. It's a lot of science vessels. You might ask the question, why, why the science vessels? What are so good about the science vessels? Well, for one, they detect lurkers. We've already seen how those lurkers are super duper effective against this marine-based army. But I honestly feel like way more important than any of the lurker impact of the, of the science vessel is the mutilisk impact. Remember these mutilisks? that we, we, we talked about, the mutilisks that were being so good at microing. Uh, oh, hold on, let's, let's just appreciate my micro again. Ah, uh, muta micro, yeah, look at this. These mutilisks are often the linchpin of all Zerg mid games. They're using the late early game to pick off Marines, to pick off SCVs and all this stuff. We talked about how the lurkers can be used to hold this off, but what the hell's happening with those mutilisks when this is going on? Well, let's take a look at the spell called Irradiate. Let's take a look at the spell called Irradiate. Here's two science vessels. Here's these ten mutilisks. They'll tend to pack up as a ball, and if you, the Terran player, click at the side of the mutilisk clump, you will almost always get a mutilisk that is on the bottom of the stack. Notice that he clicked on the side. It's hard to now select this irradiated mutilisk and move it off the clump. Oh my god, look at that trace. Did a great job with his second irradiate. And here I showcase Muta Death. Muta death. So I want to highlight one last thing before we begin stepping into the juicy bits of this mid game. This this literal element three, the true proper mid game of Zerg versus Terran, where we see bio vessel tank versus defiler lurker, and that's a lot of what people think of when they think canonical Zerg versus Terran. I want to ask the question: Why not these other mutilists, or why not these other units? We already talked about the fact how hydralisks suck, and we showed them getting bear mauled by bio. What about some of the other Terran units? What about the vulture? Well, the Vulture is a really interesting unit because mines are ridiculously good. Vultures can get insane value, but here, four Hydralisks versus four Vultures. I, I think I, I either don't lose any Hydras or lose just one. Hydras murder Vultures. And interestingly enough, Lings versus Vultures, this is the same amount of money of Zerglings. Let me just double check. This is 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300. I, ha I, I have messed this math up so many times. This is versus four Vultures, each are 75. So this is 300 minerals of Zerg versus 300 minerals of Terran. Look what 300 minerals of Zerglings do versus the Vultures. If you get a good surround, whoosh, cleaned up. Now, technically, you can use Vultures to micro against Zerglings. Here, 
we're going to see the most rudimentary form of micro from uh, Terran. There is a way to micro the vultures so that they never stop moving and you can literally never get hit by zerglings. But I wanted to showcase just something a little simpler just so you see the value that vultures can get. They literally, we're doing hold position micro. They stop, they shoot. They stop, they shoot. They stop, they stop, they shoot. These vultures are not taking very much damage. So technically, these vultures can be useful versus the zerglings. Technically, technically. But let's let's just ask a real obvious question. Okay, vultures can't shoot up. Oh my god, reality. Oh! Oh my god, I couldn't learn StarCraft with reality leaking in. Vultures don't shoot up. What about the mutalisks? And I know some of you might go, I know, goliaths. Believe it or not, goliaths are not good against mutalisks. Believe it or not, this is weird to say out loud, but they're not good. Look at this. Look at this. Where is my muta? Where the hell is this video? Okay, here we go. Goliaths are actually not good against mutalisks. Here's 12 goliaths. They don't have any upgrades. They don't have any upgrades right now. These are 0, zero Goliaths versus 0, zero Mutalisks, so we can see the baseline. But watch this. This is 12 Mutalisks plus 5. 12 Mutalisks plus 5. This is 17 Mutalisks versus 12 Goliaths. Okay? So this is a smidge more Mutalisks than Goliaths. Now, Goliaths do cost 100 Minerals and 50 Gas. Mutalisk costs 100 minerals and 100 gas. Why would I ever compare those? Why is that fair? Because Zerg will generally have three bases versus Terran two bases, so Zerg just has more gas anyways. We're asking the question, why not Goliaths at the start of the game? These Mutalisks, believe it or not, are going to crush the Goliaths. It will, won't even be close. It won't even be close. So, yeah, if you want to open Vulture as Terran, you might be good against Zerglings. You will struggle versus Hydralisks. You'll certainly struggle versus Mutalisks. But you, you, you have to account for the fact that Mutalisks are an impending doom that is coming at any moment. We had seven Mutalisks left over. We went in with 17 versus 12. We now have seven versus zero. Hilariously, a lot of the time, when Terran open up going mass factory, they skip out on bio. Zergs respond doing this. Zergs go, all right, I'm mass expanding and going mass mutalists because mutalists are way better than bios, <laughs> which is kind of weird. Um, one last thing I want to note, just for the purpose of the early game, what about wraiths? Why do we not see lots of wraiths built in the matchup? I'm going to say the same thing I said in Protoss vs. Terran. Wraiths suck. They're a very situational unit. A Hydralisk that costs way less than a Wraith easily destroys a Wraith in a one-on-one -on -one and has almost half its health left over. Um, so... <laughs> wraiths, wraiths suck. That said, sometimes we will see Wraiths used to pick off Overlords in small numbers. So, for instance, here, the Wraith is wandering around. Oh, it sees an Overlord. Oh, it sees an Overlord. Wraiths do kill Overlords very, 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 very quickly. And this is obnoxious. You will see Terran sometimes open with Vulture to maybe harass it drones, but also defend against Lynx. Quickly get a Wraith to kill off Overlords. And watch my supply, I'm at 32 of 51. Oh, I want to build Mutalisks. M. I try to build six. I can't. I can only build five at once. Ah. Losing Overlord sucks. Losing Overlord sucks. So, at this point, what have we done? We've helped identify why it is that Terran relies so heavily on Bio in the start of the game. We've stressed something that cannot be stressed enough. Dude. Mute Marines are so powerful. You'll just lose. Look, I, ha I have so many replays. Where, where is this? Yeah. Look at this. Look at this. We have four sunken colonies and 24 Marines. It's not a huge number of Marines. Two control groups, not even sent in. 
at a good clip, mow down these sunken colonies. It's so easy to lose. It's so ridiculously easy to lose to Marines. <laughs> oh god, the retreat. We talked a little bit about why Marines are sort of the big threat. Sure, you can open up Vulture Wraith, but you got to get Bio in there to make sure you stabilize. Um, I'm going to be very um, hand-wavy for a moment. There are ways to go mech from the start of the game. That will be in a completely separate episode. <laughs> That's its own weird thing. I'm going to shove that away. So for the most part, we know that we're going to see a Bio opening... We're going to have Lurkers, Mutas, and Lings, the Zerg to defend, because there's not really much else in the way of tools that we, the Zerg player, have. And now it's time to get to the early game. What the hell is so good about Defilers? Well, you heard me talk about the Marines supported by tanks. We took a look at some of those videos uh, at the start of just Marines and tanks versus Ling Lurker. Here is a common looking formation in the Zerg vs. Terran mid game. The Zerg trying to establish a fourth base has a smattering of Zerglings, not many, just a dash, one Defiler, and some Lurkers. Siege tanks do splash damage, but they do not deal damage to Lurkers burrowed under Dark Swarm. Also, Lurkers do deal damage under Dark Swarm. There's this uh, Nidus Canal that connects the bases, so if I'm ever feeling worried as Zerg, I can just ferry more units over via my Nidus Canal. And my Lings and my Mutalisks have helped buy me time to be able to establish these extra expansions. And thanks to the uh, Dark Swarm, I'm invincible. I literally can't be killed. The consumability that we're seeing here is an essential piece to ensure that we have enough energy to continue to Dark Swarm. So here I am trying to defray any uh, future threat by marching a little ways forward. Our Terran player retreats, losing not really that much, but the important thing going on here is that the Terran player is completely negated by Dark Swarm. Okay. Dark Swarm is the thing that most people think are the is the defining ability in Zerg vs. Terran for the mid-game. And it is. It is. <laughs> it is. Listen, it is. I'm not going to say it isn't. But I want you to not overlook the importance of Plague. When you watch high-level Zergs, they'll get Consume as the first ability, this one, uh, that they'll research at the Defiler Mound. But immediately on the heels of that, they'll get Plague. Why? Plague is the anti-bio ability. I don't care how much you've seen people build Ultralisks. I don't care how much you've seen people get good Lurker flanks or good Zergling flanks. Plague is actually how to completely wreck bio in a guaranteed sense. Guaranteed, guaranteed, guaranteed. So... I have to bring a Zergling over to make sure I have 12 Zerglings. This is 12 Zerglings. This is nothing. 12 Zerglings. I take one Defiler. I walk forward. I Plague. Two things happen. First of all, Plague reduces the health of everything there to one. Not instantly, just over time. It drops it down to one. So, these are now squishy Marines. But in particular, these Marines cannot stim. Because they have less than 10 health. You have to spend 10 health on the Marine in order to get the stim. The Medics, you know what's happening to their energy? It is plummeting to zero. So, even if you have no units with which to assault this force right now, those Medics are draining their energy constantly. And this guarantees future squishiness of these Marines. Now, without any Lurkers, without any Ultralisks, without any expensive units, I just Dark Swarm. Terran can try to retreat. <laughs> Plague. Plague is the anti-bio unit. Mm. Um, you also heard me say, kind of in the same video, where I said that Lurkers are really not an attacking unit. 
Defilers are really not an attacking unit. They are not good at doing big core army style pushes. So for instance, here's this bio force that was sitting outside my expansion. I throw down a dark swarm. I'm going to consume some zerglings to gain more energy. All right, I'm going to throw down another dark swarm in order to advance. Terran just backs up again. I think Terran has lost uh, one marine. I think that may have been the first or second marine lost. So I keep moving forward. I'm moving forward pretty quickly and being pretty conservative. But I have to make sure that I'm still consuming lots of zerglings as this fight's going on. Ugh, oh, this is exhausting. My god. Now, if you're Terran, you might be saying to yourself, this happens to me all the time, I hate this shit, this drives me insane. But, again, I'm, I'm playing pretty quickly. And by quickly, I mean I am solely focused on this. I do not really have issues controlling this army because I've played this game for 20 years. So the rate at which it is advancing towards the Terran's front is pretty damn fast. But... Watch the move that Trask is going to do, one of the most essential things. One of the most essential things for Terran players to do. Is to just go around. So here I am, I'm advancing forward. I'm almost out of Zerglings, I'm almost out of energy. Oh! Sometimes Zerg will make mistakes like this, and Terran can get little advantages. Terran's always looking for those sorts of opportunities. Uh, okay, here's where I do it. Sometimes a Zerg will be a little too close to a side like this. And you know what you can do as Terran? You just go around. You just work your way all the way around. Let's say I don't have that many units up here at the top. The Terran can just find a weak spot, find an opening, and begin to jam their way straight into this expansion. And if I don't have any defenses, I'm doomed. Woof. This is really the danger of trying to do straight pushes. Um, however, if for whatever reason you are able to sneak a small set of Ling, Lurker, Defiler in at a different angle, if you're able to do this, then defilers become absolutely sick. Here are two bunkers, a bunch of bio, there's tanks. If this is a Terran expansion and I'm able to waltz my way all the way up to it, it's just really not that much that Terran can do about it because these are invincible lurkers. This sucks. This is painful. Yuck. Or by the same token, um, well, I should say, I need to stop right here and note that this is the most important statement of the mid game. The most important statement of mid game here, which is Zerg defends three base with Defiler, Terran pressures and expands. Point three and four from the mid game all the way to the late game, Terran needs to be on the aggressive. Attack, 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 because the instant you stop attacking, literally this small force of Ling Defiler Lurker can annihilate any expansion of yours. You must be aggressive all game long as Terran. I should say you must be aggressive once you get to the mid game. From mid game till the end of the game, Attack, 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 attack. For this reason, um, much more common than just barreling into the front is taking some empty overlords and just a small amount of overlords with units. One with two lurkers, the other with a defiler and some zerglings. Even if there's missile turrets. So I unload the lurkers. I accidentally whiff and don't get any of the uh, zerglings out. It's fine. What are you going to do as Terran here? We see this very, very commonly done in the matchup. Do -do 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 -do. Hey. So these are some of the, the Zerg tactics. And the one unit that I have not spoken about for quite some time is the Science of Vessel. We're going to be talking about the Science of Vessel a ton 
for the next chunk of the game. What's the science vessel doing during all this? Why is it that SK Terran, we see so often, gets um, masses and masses of science vessel? Even mech. You'll see bio and science vessel, and then the Terran will switch into a bunch of factory units, but still be making science vessel. What are they doing? This is the typical grind that you will see in this matchup, the typical tactics that you will see in this matchup from the Terran player. You'll typically see the Terran out here with some bio. They can always run away from the lurkers. And the Zerg goes, oh shit, I've got my defiler irradiated you hear those other those are irradiates also going off on the rest of my lurkers so, so some of my lurkers are dying and i'm going to pull back here and note that often a zerg player will panic in this moment and go oh my gosh i have to consume a zergling to try to throw down another dark swarm make sure you hit hold position on all your units because as i run to my zerglings notice how they run away well Notice how they initially run away from my Defiler because they're taking damage from a Radiate. So you have to be very careful. So I whiff that. This egg right here is me going, oh shit, I gotta build another Defiler. So see, I've selected all my Defilers. See these two that are slowly dying? That's the Irradiate. Another Irradiate goes off. Oh no, what do I do? I'm on a clock. This is why the Nidus Canal is such an important tool defensively in Zergurus Terran. I know I have a shitload of units on the screen. This is this was an example game. That's why I have 33k in the bank. <laughs> but you can go, oh my god, let me get maybe this defiler will pop out in time. Wait, no no no, no I got I got my defiler back. So the instant that dark swarms down, Terran typically advances and then retreats. So this is me going, phew! But our Terran hero here, the science vessels, put the clock back on. Irradiate on both these defilers. So I try to consume some more dudes. Ooh, I don't get it off in time. And often if you're Zerg, you'll go, oh shit, I need to build a defiler. Here I select a larva, I build a defiler, but I didn't build it in time. I didn't build it in time. I'm just slowly losing these super important gas base units. This is mid game for Terran. This is a common tactic that you'll see Terran do. Come on, it's a common, it's a common tactic. Come on, Defiler. Come on. Come on. Oh my gosh, I'm building more lurkers because I only have Zerglings here. I didn't get the Defiler in time. I'll try to come over here. I'll try to build uh, this. Uh, I'll try to build this Defiler and get it to consume. It doesn't work. So he winds up killing all my stuff. Combined with this, Terran can consider using dropships. You can't just use dropships willy-nilly though. I want to talk a little bit about good and bad ways to use dropships. Late game is Zerg. I want you to start seeing how in mid and late game is Zerg, you're starting to just spend gas like crazy. Once again, to recap, early game, you're both building up. When you get to late early game, the only really tools you have are mutalisks and lurkers to try to defend and delay against this infinite number of bio that's so scary. And then as we're getting to this three base and going up to four, oh my gosh, there's science vessels irradiating our defilers and our lurkers. We have to build scourge to hold off our dropships. Holy shit, we have to be very intelligent with how we spend our gas. It's almost as though we're playing a strategy game. You don't want to just take your dropships and hurl them willy-nilly wherever the hell you want. Dropships are great because we've already seen that even a small number of Marines can instantly end the game. We've already seen that even 12 Marines left to their own devices with virtually no medic support can just waltz up to a bunch of sunken colonies and end the damn game. So we have to be very, very careful that we don't let one dropship, which contains seven Marines and one medic, kill us. So naturally, if you're Zerg, you're going to want to keep pairs of Scourge around. But Scourge, oh, listen to me. They're called Scourge, dude. If you're just sending in the dropship, you can assume that it will die. 
you can just assume that you're sending it to its death. You have to set up the dropship. This is, I think, the um, most overlooked error that your mid-level Terran will make trying to get to high level. He'll just send the Scourge, or excuse me, he'll just send the dropship, hoping it'll work. Sometimes it does and he wins the game, sometimes it doesn't. And he goes, bleh, Zerg. You want to do things like this, where you have Marine and Medic with Science Vessel support, and you're trying to send the dropship in. Then all of a sudden, we have a dance. Then all of a sudden, it's up to Zerg to get this dropship to overextend so that you can kill it off. In the case where you can successfully bait these Scourge as Terran, you can deal massive, massive damage. Often, Zerg players in the modern era will leave Zerglings and a Defiler in this main base in case this happens. Because woof, we lost our Scourge. Oh no, alas, alack. Here is my pretend small army. It's really hard though, because if you, if you don't have enough direct damage, if you're trying to rely too much on Defilers, the Marines just walk all the way around. Now normally they'll be stimming, but I wanted to slow this down, so we have just some walking old Walking ass marines. These marines can find the Nidus Canal, kill it, and suddenly you don't have any more reinforcements here. Oh gosh, ooh. There's another critical tactic that is the combination of the last two. Remember this grind down that we saw? Often Scourge will be here supporting the Lurker Defiler that's defending the ramp or defending the fourth base or some such thing. The Marines are like, oh gosh darn, oh geez, we can't break through, so the Science Vessels will come up. But the Science Vessels will again try to do this baiting. And then sometimes your Zerg player will panic trying to kill off these uh, Science Vessels, sometimes accidentally sending all of them into one vessel. Come on, come on, video. Okay, here we go. Oh no, I mess up. Ugh. Okay, so if I'm Zerg, even if I got this second vessel, um, I might be thinking to myself, I did it. I successfully got the, the, the vessels. Yeah, take that, Terran. Eat shit, man. Yeah. But this is why dropships are very nice to have as well, because this dropship that you have intelligently held at bay until you saw the Scourge die, now has the ability to drop freely. Or as another example, um, suppose you kept that dropship with the rest of those units, you might be able to take this dropship and send it in now. There we go, now it moves. So this is what I mean by set up the dropships. It's gonna be a ton, ton, ton of, um, uh, opportunities to attack, to apply pressure, because these Lurkers and Defilers are really all Zerg has to stay alive in that mid-game period. So they're gonna have to be very defensive because those are not really good attacking units, maybe good counter-dropping, counter-harassing units, but they're not good at just attacking. Um, so these kinds of dropship tactics are a great way to exploit a Zerg who's misallocated his units. But remember, set up your dropships. Don't just send them in Make sure that they are being supported, that you say, now is the opportunity and here's why. If we ask ourselves, what's next? What's next in the game? You heard me say that Marines counter everything in the game. And in many ways, I wasn't kidding. Ultralisks are often built as a nice late game tool for Zerg against Marines. But I wanna express clearly why these are good. First of all, if I hover over the carapace, Ultralisks start with one armor, and they have a unique two Ultralisks upgrade that give them a bonus two armor. So this is three armor that they can get in addition to regular old carapace upgrades. And for this reason, Marines are not so good against Ultras in theory because it's six damage per Marine minus the three armor is three damage per shot. Yeah, the Marines will get upgraded, but the Ultralis will also get upgraded, and those two will cancel out. And as much as I love this unit, because it's fast, look at how fast and mobile this thing is. I've been used to these immobile lurkers, these immobile defilers that are really strong. 
Marines still kill Ultralisks pretty damn fast. And if you have a science vessel that casts defensive matrix on one of those Marines, you can lose zero Marines. What makes Ultralisks good is that they can tank for small numbers of Zerglings, and then the Zerglings deal ridiculous amounts of damage. This is one of the real reasons why Ultralisks are so good is because you spend a lot of your gas on the Ultralisks. You have all these minerals left over for Zerglings. And I'm not even microing the Zerglings very well. Most of these examples are just 1As for clarity. And so versus Bio, uh, by the way, these Zerglings are not regular speed Zerglings. They also have the Adrenaline upgrade, which is uh, expected at this point in the game. When Zerg gets to Defilers, Zerg is going to have the Adrenal upgrade. The Adrenal upgrade uh, increases the attack rate of Zerglings, making them very scary. Commonly, these are called Cracklings, and they have the highest damage output in the game. Um, so we've talked a little bit about what tools does Zerg have as the game goes on against Bio? Well, Ultralisk Zergling is one of the more direct attack tools. We've also talked about Plague being another really good late game use in order to set all these Marines' health to zero so we can use almost any unit against it. What's Terran to do in this period when we're starting to see lots of um, Lurkers and defilers. One of the things that we see show up as a late game tool, which is really fascinating, is the spider mine. Spider mines are not actually that great in the early game, because what are we fi facing early game? Mutas and Lings and Lurkers that are all trying to defend. <laughs> Zerg's not even looking to attack at the uh, early and late early game. Zerg's just kind of defending, so mines are not good at attacking because they don't move, right? But when Zerg starts to want to do some of these counterattacks, mines are stupid good. Here's me pathetically throwing down a Dark Swarm. Ugh, Dark Swarm does not deny damage from mines. Ugh. Ugh. I throw down a plague just to be spiteful. And so there's this interesting thing that happened where Terran players started to realize, wait a minute, mines are actually pretty damn good against this more melee, cutesy-focused Zerg army. And you know what else is kind of interesting? The Ling Lurker Defiler armies, they're also not that great against tanks. Look what happens with this patch of tanks as I try to move forward. Now, I know for a fact that these lurkers can't be hurt. But all the lings are gone. Every single ling is gone. And now, Terran can even just say, you know what, screw these lurkers. I'm just going to shoot these defilers. So this got Terran players thinking, huh, what if we just went mass mech in the late game? So here are, this is, a, this is a pretty good amount of spider mines, but it's not actually super stupid. You'll see obscene amounts of spider mines in late game Zerg vs. Terran. But Terran players started to notice that bio marines are insanely good early game against almost everything, but they start to struggle against ultralists and defilers. So if we switch to mech in the late game, we get the insane benefit of spider mines versus the armies that we've seen, and we get tanks that are good versus everything. Watch how badly 24 ultralisks loses to this shit, man. So already these guys are taking a lot of damage. Some of the mines are just getting one shot by the Ultralisks when they pop up. But watch what happens when the Ultralisks get close to these tanks, dude. Watch them just... Boom! <laughs> Look, tanks are so good against Ultralisks! Oh my god! I want to rewatch this to highlight something that's really important here. 
which is that when the mines pop up, you see them explode, but a lot of the time the Ultralisk is just one-shotting it. So for instance, watch this, this mine come up. Whack, killed, killed, killed. So I saw, I see two hits so far. There's a third hit. That gets killed, that gets killed, that hits. So there's been about four or five mines that have actually dealt damage here. So I don't want you to get confused and think that the mines are the number one source of damage here. Here, where a few mines go off and all the tank shots go off, this is what got Terran players really thinking. This is what got Terran players going, is there a way to transition to mass mech in the late game? And this is actually what we see is uh, probably the most common modern strategy. If I go back to my, my list of slides, let me... Uh, uh, uh. We see that this is often what Terrans do in the late game. They lift off all of their barracks, rebuild them with all factories, and go mass tank and mass vulture. And you might be going, well, oh, well that's kind of confusing. Can I see that in action? And to answer this, I'm going to say yes. When I'm done with these video clips, we're going to take a look at two games between Zero and Flash to help us really solidify our understanding of Zerg vs. Terran. But if we head back to these games, um, this begged the question for Zerg, how the hell do I deal with this? How the hell do I deal with all these things? Well, interestingly, when Terrans switch back to mech, Zerglings become your best friend. Mid-game is all about gas, right? Defilers cost gas, lurkers cost gas, scourge cost gas, upgrades cost gas. But if your opponent starts going mech, you just send in zerglings in lines you see me actually deliberately box selecting them at kind of an even pace to make sure that these lines of zerglings move through and the zerglings activate a lot of these mines and then all of a sudden the zerglings are getting onto the tanks and the tanks are dealing tons of damage to each other and what did we lose a zerg mostly minerals due to sending in lots of zerglings what did the Terran lose? Well, he lost a lot of his mines. He lost a lot of his vultures. So that, you know, eats up some time. Um, ugh. But in particular, we killed off some gas. A lot of these tanks. Now, I need to come back to the to the money slide. Let me... Uh, 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 ooh, 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 here's the money slide. We're in the late game now. We've talked about early game. We've talked about how in the early game... What is this early game about? Just build up. Not much is happening. What happens in element two? We've seen that marines and medics dominate pretty much everything. Zerg is in defensive mode in this late early game. What have we seen about phase three, element three here, the mid game? We've seen some cool tactics of defiler, lurker, Zergling Scourge versus Dropship Science Vessel Marine. And now we're looking at late game. We've seen that the mass bio vessel style, this thing, Zerg responds with Ling Ultra Defiler. I've showed you Plague annihilating Marines. I've showed you Ultra Ling annihilating Marines. We're now asking this last question. What the hell do we do against Mech Switch? What the hell do we do against the Mech Switch? Um, okay, well, Zerglings. We've seen Zerglings made a pretty big dent. I hear this asked a lot. Every time there's any game where a Terran player is getting uh, a bunch of, a bunch of, you know, Vulture tank, I see tons of players go, this Zerg is such an idiot. None of these Terran units shoot up. None of these. If Zerg just made some mutilisks, he would easily win. Would he, though? Here's me building 30 mutilisks. No, more than that. Almost 36. We have 34 mutilisks. You heard me say the Goliaths are really not the best against mutilisks. So what's a Terran to do? Remember Irradiate? If you have enough science vessels... A handful of irradiates is hilariously good against mutilisks. 
I, I was actually surprised to see how badly I lost to Sir. This, this shocked the hell out of me. These mutalisks are not the most clustered mutalisks. They're not packed into a ball. <laughs> and they just get stupidly shit on. I mean, I, I could have started splitting earlier, 100%. But even so, I was personally shocked when I recorded this at 1 p.m. this afternoon. I was like, God, that is so sick. Um, the, the, really, a lot of Zerglings and counterattacking in different places is the most effective. I've also seen people say, well, what about Mass Queen if you're up against Mass Mech? It's hard to get the time to build Mass Queen, but you can get big spikes in tempo. We're spending our gas building Queens. We're spending our minerals building Zerglings. We're feeling pretty good. And if you do the uh, the cloning technique that we talked about in the control setup, you can very accurately annihilate a whole bunch of tanks in one fell swoop. The problem is, though, that queens take forever. So uh, we were recording videos for two hours and 17 minutes. And then, watch this. We're gonna, At 17.30, we're going to build a queen. And now I'm going to speed this puppy up, man. We're going to speed this up. All right, to 4x speed. So it takes 30 seconds for the queen to finish, and I've upgraded the queen maximum energy. So instead of popping out with 50 out of 200 energy, it pops out with 62 out of 250. So um, we're now 90 seconds since we started building the queen. Our queen does not have enough for broodlings. Still doesn't have enough. 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 Oh, we're getting close. We're getting close. It's looking like two and a half minutes, is it? Oh my god, it is two and a half minutes. Very important thing to note. 150 out of 250 energy. Broodlings cost 150 energy. You know what that means? It means after you do this very satisfying bomb. Holy shit, it's still at 4x speed. Ah! Oh, oh, slow down. Go back to normal. Holy shit. After you do this very satisfying bomb, your queens don't do anything right now. They're dead weight. They're dead weight. They don't do anything right now. Do you understand me? So you have to be very, very careful when you are um, going up against or when you're going up against a mech and you build a bunch of queens because though that moment felt good, if you don't have any more units, and Terran does, Terran can just kill you. Oh. So really, the big thing that we've done thus far in this episode of Let's Learn StarCraft is we've identified why this is the broad skeleton of Zerg vs. Terran. I have not shown you lots of variations on opening. I have not talked about what the timing attacks are in ways to exploit weakness. I have not really even shown you a full game yet with this in mind. After we end this episode, this is part one of the Zerg vs. Terran core strategy. I'm just going to use the restroom and get some water, and then we're going to look at two games between Zero and Flash in 2012, when both these players were really at their peak performance. And I want to ask the question, can we see this skeleton at work despite all of the crazy shit that's possible in that matchup? The Zerg vs. Terran matchup is very easy to get confused in because there's so many different units that can show up. There's so many ways that you can abruptly die. There's so many... It's, just, it's actually hard. Artosis once described Zerg vs. Terran as the most losable matchup in the game for both sides. And I think that's actually a very accurate... Uh, description. But if you're struggling in Zerg vs. Terran, either as Terran or Zerg, you're doing great. I want you to know you're doing just fine. By Hero, one of the greatest Zergs in the history of the game, fought against Flash, and Flash did some clever manipulations of early game build orders, threw Hero off a little bit, and immediately won those games <laughs> in the ASL4 finals that happened just last weekend. I mean, immediately won the games. It was not close. It was awful. <laughs> it happens to everyone. 
I lost in the 2006 WCG USA Finals to a bunker rush, okay? This shit happens, okay? And I practice against it too. Super common, super normal, don't worry about it. The purpose of this episode was to give you a sense of what that structure is so you don't feel lost. And when we come back, we're gonna take a look at at least two games, I'll probably go a little bit late, in order to highlight how everything continues to pour back into these core elements over the course of a game so we can really understand it. I'll be right back. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get some water. I'm thirsty. We're gonna take a short break. It's going to be, I'm gonna call it three minutes long. And we return, we're gonna learn some damn StarCraft, okay? Stick around. 